<laughs> Hello, AP students. This is Mr. McGravy, and welcome to uh, the final very special graduation episode of Civics in Action with Mr. McGravy. Um, today's guest is Congressman Seth Moulton. He's our first federal government representative guest, both in the classroom and on the show. So we are absolutely thrilled to have him here. As we all know, um, he was supposed to come in on the 17th, but we all know what happened. But it's so great that he's taking time out of his schedule to come in. Um, Principal Gonsalves was going to do a little bit of a NAMS welcome, but he's doing virtual graduations right now. I will welcome Congressman Moulton. Congressman Moulton, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, first thing I wanted to do is I've been asking all of my guests, um, how are you? How are, how's your family doing? How's everything going with you and the, in the Moulton household? Well, we're doing well. Um, you know, one of the tough parts of this job is water and in particular has been a real uh, unexpected blessing of this uh, of this um, whole pandemic okay great I think you faded out a little bit can you hear me okay I can hear you fine yeah okay great sometimes my internet I have to adjust great well I'm glad everything's going well um the first thing that I wanted to ask you was uh, and my students these are all questions generated from my students, actually, Congressman Moulton, um, how has COVID-19 impacted your job as a U.S. Congressman? Are you working from home? Are you going into D.C.? Are you doing a little bit of both? If you could touch upon that, uh, we'd appreciate it. Sure. Well, of course, it's impacted my job dramatically. I think this pandemic has impacted everybody uh, dramatically. I'm lucky to still have a job though. A lot of people have lost their jobs over the pandemic. I also feel fortunate to have a job where I can help a lot of people. Uh, we've never received more constituent calls to our office for help, for assistance, because um, people are struggling because of the pandemic. They need medical assistance or they lost their job. They're trying to reach a food pantry or figure out how to take care of their kids at home. So there are a lot of people with needs. That, and we've been that's, very, very, that's a very, very good point. Yeah, we've been we've been very busy with that. And that's a huge part of our job. A lot of people think of members of Congress just being in Washington. But in fact, we spend a lot of time at home in our districts uh, helping all the people like you uh, who are my constituents because I work for you and uh, I'm a public servant. Um, you're my boss. You're my bosses, I should say. And uh, and uh, so we're very busy um, helping you as much as uh as much as we possibly can. As far as remote work, honestly, the House of Representatives has not been very effective at doing remote work. We've been down to Washington a few times to vote, uh, but, um, but honestly, uh, we have not been doing a very good job at, at working remotely. So I think that's something we need to work on. Great, thank you. Sorry, Congressman Moulton, I'm just having some um, technological issues on my end. I can hear you, but you're freezing up. Uh, can you see and hear me? All right, we're going to. So, uh, one second, Congressman Moulton, I'm just trying to maybe plug into the Internet and see if that works. All right, I appreciate that. That's, no, that's one okay. of the issues of these is the internet that's sometimes okay. I, fails it, it, us a little bit and uh, doesn't always work <laughs> so great. But I can see you and I can hear you. That's okay. I don't have the best. Okay. Either, so. All right. Well, I appreciate that. We're ready to go to issue number three and thank you for rolling with it. Um, so my students um, were very, very interested in your role in the impeachment process. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of confusion of House of Representatives role versus the set role of the Senate. So if you wouldn't mind, could you review, just review a little bit for my civic students your role in the impeachment process of President Trump and what lessons um, do you think civic students can take away from that experience in our history? Well, impeachment is one of the 
harshest remedies, um, the most extreme measures that the Congress can take uh, against a president to hold the that administrative branch, uh, the executive uh, uh, branch accountable. And so we have to exercise that uh, ability to impeach with real caution. I was one of the first members of the House to call for impeaching Donald Trump because he broke the law. And the law is pretty clear in our Constitution that if a president breaks the law, there should be an impeachment trial in the House. Now, whether or not he is actually convicted is a matter for debate, but we should not be will, unwilling to have that trial. And that's why I was one of the first. I think I was the first in Massachusetts to call um, for the uh, for the president to be impeached um, first on the campaign trail of all the different people who uh, ran for president. And I did it not because it was a politically advantageous thing to do. In fact, it was unpopular when I came out for impeachment, but just because it's the right thing to do under the law. I think that's the most important way for us to think about impeachment. Great. So, Congressman Moulton, just to clarify for my students, you were involved in the investigation and the vote to go forward, not a vote for guilt or innocence, which the Senate did. Would that be accurate? Well, the the essentially that's right. The, the Senate has the power to actually hold a trial and convict. Uh, the House decides whether to have a um, impeachment investigation to hold hearings on impeachment. Um, that's the initial vote. And then whether to inst to send articles of impeachment, um, uh, sort of charge sheets, if you were, if you would, uh, to the Senate um, for uh, the ultimate judgment. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the students were very, very interested. I, you know, I did some prep just to kind of introduce you to who um, you are and your role in Massachusetts. And then your colleague, Rick Jacobs, who has come into Civics Day many, many times, who's been great. Um, he always would talk about some things that you were involved in. And last spring, it was very, very exciting because you were running for president. So a lot of the students were so excited that they were gonna meet someone, you know, just running for president. So I had a lot of the students ask me questions about what it's like to run for president. So the main gist of the questions are, what was it like running for president? Why did you run? And I think the, I like this question the best. You know, obviously, you know, you didn't get the nomination, but you went through the process. Um, what did you learn? What did you learn throughout that process? Um, the kids are very interested in that. Well, it, is, it's a, it was an extraordinary experience. And I'm glad I ran because I, the reason I ran is that I thought it was the best way I could serve the country. I don't think Donald Trump is going to be easy to beat, but I think it's incredibly important that we beat him. And I was the only young combat veteran in the race. I was the only combat veteran, period, in the race. And I'm not sure there would be a better adversary for Donald Trump than an actual combat veteran. So that's why I ran. It's about service to the country and how you can best serve. Uh, you mentioned Rick. Uh, Rick is awesome. And, and one of the things I love about Rick is he brings a true servant leader approach to everything he does. Um, because he spent a lot of time uh, serving the country in city year. So those of us who have served the country in some way, I think, always try to look at our future service, whether it's in politics or something else, uh, through that lens. And when I got to go around and campaign for president, I met so many great Americans who deserve to be better served by their leaders in Washington. So many great Americans who have extraordinary lives and make extraordinary contributions to our country in a lot of ways that we don't see every single day. And I think the best part of running for president was meeting those great Americans from very different places, different backgrounds, uh, but recognizing that we need to work harder to serve them better in Washington. Great. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, what's been going on in the country um, with the protests and with the death of George Floyd, as an educator, as a teacher, I struggled with is this something I discuss on remote learning? Is this something I don't discuss? Obviously, it's a very touchy topic, but I decided to talk about it. And um, ye yesterday, I had a forum with about 20 students, and we just did a roundtable discussion of what was going on and such a wide variety of opinions. And I'm so glad we talked about it. Um, so obviously, the protests and what's going on in our country and the death of George Floyd is on the minds of many, many of our students. Um, my students, students across the country, what message would you like to convey to them? Um, being an eighth grader during these tough times, 
you know, obviously, whether they're black or Hispanic or white or whatever, um, what kind of message would you like to convey to them as a leader, uh, as, as our U.S. congressman? Okay, we have a little bit of a technical issue here. I think we're frozen. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you now. How about, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? I can see you. Great. Okay. All set. Yep. Did you hear yep. the question? Yes, I did. I did. And I think it's incredibly important that you're talking about this because we are a country that rooted in this idea that all are created equal. I mean, it's literally written into our constitution. And yet we clearly have not lived up to that because we don't treat everybody equally in our society. And the fact that there is still discrimination based on race or sexual orientation or sex or whatever, the fact that that still exists today means that we all have to take a response, take responsibility for fixing it. So even if you think that you're not racist, it doesn't mean you can't do something to help to end racism in our society. So I'm glad you're talking about it. And the message that I have for everybody in America, not just for your students, is that we have a lot of work to do to live up to our values, but we got to keep working at it. And that should be our goal. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we're, we're, you know, I, I appreciate you taking the time to get here. I, I did want to, if it's okay, uh, Congressman Malton, I did want to give a quick shout out to one of your former interns, who is actually one of my former students, Caitlin Parks, who helped set this whole thing up. So Caitlin Parks, I, I want to say thank you. And I know she, she didn't get to work with you fully because of the pandemic, but I just wanted to give her a quick shout out. Well, Emmy wants to to give you a quick shout out too. This is my daughter Emmy, who was very anxious to get on and say hi. Can you say hi, hi everybody? Can you wave? <laughs> yeah, that's so nice, Emmy. Thank you. <laughs> um, so um, she's she's ready to go out on a nice walk, but uh, she's oh, great. very eager to say hi. She's gotten quite used to doing video conferences, which is not what we expected uh, as part of her 19 month old education. But she's doing a great job. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, Okay, so we're getting towards the end of the show and I, I really, really appreciate uh, everything. Um, one of the things that I did somehow manage to get to show the kids and it, it just totally hit with them was um, the Moulton and Mohammed show. I think it was the Conan O'Brien clip and then that got them more interested. <laughs> and the kids were totally riveted by Mohammed and you and the connection. So a lot of the kids were gonna ask you, um, how did that come about? And I think you're still in contact with Mohammed. They wanted to know how he was doing during everything. Well, first of all, you're very nice to say that the kids were riveted by Mohammed and me. But um, I learned over many episodes of that show that uh, oh, Emmy sees an A on the keyboard. And she's Hi. learning the letter A. So that's right, Emmy. That's an A. Um, I learned over many episodes of that show that uh, that Muhammad was definitely the more popular half. So uh, Muhammad is amazing. He's an incredible um, young Iraqi man, now an American man who um, really came from extraordinary circumstances. It's lucky that he's alive because he was persecuted by Saddam Hussein, the former dictator uh, in Iraq. And he and I did this, put this TV uh, show together uh, to talk about um, freedom and democracy and, and fundamentally to talk about uh, American values and how um, they might work in Iraq where, um, where they weren't used to um, democratic freedoms. Uh, Muhammad is doing very well. He came to America to study, um, to, go to, uh, to go to postgraduate school. He already had his, uh, his undergraduate degree. And he came here um, a few years ago, and um, and now he's actually working to serve our country uh, himself in our State Department. Oh, that's hey, that's right. That's an A, the letter A. Wow, it's so great. We have another guest. That's great. <laughs> My kids come on the show quite a bit too, so uh, I think it's great. Well, we're getting close to our time, you know, together. I really appreciate it, and, and I think the last thing would be really, really nice is. If you wouldn't mind sending a quick little graduation message to my eighth graders who are graduating virtually on Friday, going on to high school, like high schoolers, um, you know, they didn't get to do a lot of the normal end of the year activities. And I think it would be great if you could just wish them well and um, give them a brief remark if that's okay. Well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you've worked hard to get to this moment and you should be proud of yourselves. And you should look forward to what's coming next. Um, continuing your education is incredibly important. It's certainly uh, been critical to uh, everything I've been able to do in life. 
you're also graduating at a very difficult time, a difficult time for our country, for your families. It's hard for all of us, but it's also a historic time in our country. Hold on just a second. We're also graduating at a historic time in our country. And I hope you remember that. Um, you remember that this is a difficult time, but it's also a time when we have the opportunity to make our country and our community a lot better. So take part in that effort. Celebrate your graduation, but be committed to making our world a little bit better. Thanks Great. so much. Th Congressman Moulton, I can't thank you enough for coming on and, and, and Rick, as you said before, is just a great, such such a great guy, and Rick always represents you well. And I know it didn't quite work out this time, but hopefully in the future, when things settle down, um, you can come to NAMS and 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 meet students. And I think we would appreciate that greatly. Okay, I think Congressman Moulton had to leave, um, which is fine, but he got those remarks in. Uh, sorry, we had technological issues during uh, the Google um, Meet. But obviously, that's a reality in this world. Um, I can't wait to show you this video. I think everything will be great. And um, I really, really look forward to everything and you all seeing this video. And hopefully, everything came out. Thank you so much. See you later.